Okay, today we're going to take a look at uh, some parabolas, uh, both in vertex form and standard form, and then we are going to do some really rough sketches of each of those um, so that we can do them relatively quickly. All right, let's first examine um, a parabola that's in vertex form. Hopefully you're going to recognize it being a parabola with the exponent of 2 right there. Now let's talk about what these uh, color coding things are. Okay, I put the uh, leading coefficient A in orange here. Um, that number right there, that leading coefficient A, is going to tell us whether or not the parabola is an upright parabola or an upside down. So if I have a positive A, then my parabola I know is going to be upright. If I have a negative A, then I know my parabola is going to be upside down. Okay, um, these two numbers also, I can look at these real quickly in vertex form, and I can know my vertex is going to be HK. Uh, keeping in mind here, it is showing a negative here. It'll be the opposite number here because I need a positive out, and it will be the same number that is right there for my vertex. All right, so let's take a look at one in vertex form and then just do a really rough sketch really quick. Um, let's suppose we've got a y equals um, negative 3 times the quantity x. Um, let's go ahead and do a minus. A minus 2 to the second power minus, let's say, 4. Okay, so looking at the leaning coefficient of A right there, this right here is definitely going to tell me that it is an upside down parabola. All right, then I'm going to take a look right here. Now, I usually don't pull out my vertex and list it. If I'm doing a rough sketch, then I just, you know, I know that this is going to be my x coordinate of my vertex. This is going to be my y coordinate. All right, I just always remember, okay, I'm going to shift opposite, left or right, and then um, to find that vertex, and then I am going to um, shift the same going up and down because that's going to be my y coordinate. All right, so I usually don't pull out that vertex. Okay, you could pull it out, plot the vertex, and then go from there. Um, either way works. Okay, all right, so really rough sketch here. We're not going to use graph paper. It's going to be a rough sketch. I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to shift opposite of what I see right here. I see a negative 2, so from the origin, I'm going to shift to the right 2. And then down this up here is a negative 4. I know it's going to be my y coordinate, so I'm going to shift the same up and down. So then from there, I will go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so I shifted to the right 2, down 4. I know that is my vertex. All right, and because of my leading coefficient of a negative 3 right there, I know it's going to be an upside down. Now, I'm doing rough sketches. I really don't care how wide it is. I just want to know, okay, it's an upside down located right about there. I did dis distinctly find the vertex, and it's going to be upside down. I am not overly concerned with how wide or how narrow it is. I'm just doing a really rough sketch, okay? Um, now, um, you can do rough sketches in standard form. It takes a little bit more effort uh, because the vertex is not as easily found. It doesn't stand out in front. Standard form of a quadratic would be ax squared plus bx plus c. You're going to have to remember to find the x-coordinate of your vertex using the formula x equals negative b over 2a. Once you calculate that value, you plug it back into that original equation, and then you can come up with your y value, and then there you've got your vertex. All right, so um, doing an example here. Let's say that we've got maybe y equals um, x squared plus 4x minus 1. Okay, so standard form. My uh, coefficient, A coefficient here is 1, my B coefficient is 4, and my C coefficient there is going to be a negative 1. Okay, so I need to find that vertex before I can do a rough sketch. So I'm going to use the formula X equals negative B over 2A. So I'm going to plug in a negative 4, and A is 1, so I'm going to plug in 1 right there. That's going to give me a negative 4 over 2. That's going to give me an X coordinate of negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to remember that. Now, if I want to find the y coordinate of that vertex, I'm going to take this negative 2. I'm going to plug it back into this equation. So y equals, plugging in the negative 2 for x, I've got a negative 2 quantity squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 1. Doing a little bit of arithmetic here, negative 2 squared is going to give me a 4 minus 8 minus 1. Continuing to simplify, negative 4 minus 1, that's going to give me a y of negative 5. All right, so with those two values, I've got a y of negative 5, and I've got an x of negative 2. I have now, after all of that work, finally found my vertex to this parabola. It's going to sit at 
negative 2, negative 5. Okay, now, once I've got that vertex, now I can do a really quick rough sketch. I'm going to set it on here. I'm not going to use scrap paper. I'm not going to worry about how wide or how narrow it is. All right, plotting that vertex. Negative 2, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right there's going to be the vertex of my parabola. Now I'm going to find out whether it's upright or upside down the exact same way as I did my other one. I'm going to look at my leading A coefficient. It is a positive one. It tells me my parabola is upright. So rough sketch. I'm just going to draw an upright parabola right there. All right, now this is um, primarily just in kind of what I do with uh, families of functions. I just want you to be able to shift your parabolas and you know translate them, find out whether they're upright or upside down. And at this point, we're really not concerned with accurate graphs. So looking at parabolas in vertex form and standard form.